So we've got these three kind of broad use cases, the local, the board, and the second screen. But it's all around microtasking when you're working with a mobile device. So the question then is, what are some of the differences when you're, you're working with mobile apps? There are three main differences you really need to keep into account. If you're doing some design work, if you're thinking, hey, I'd like to have a mobile website or a mobile app, there are three main things you want to be thinking about as you design or think for that. The first of those is screen size. There's just a lot less space. It's not practical to put nearly as much information on a small mobile device. You only have so much screen real estate, so you have to think very carefully about how you're actually gonna use that space to get the very best value from it. And typically it's about being incredibly ruthless about what each page or each screen should do. Rather than having a search bar and uh, recent, let's say you're putting, uh, you're, you're putting together the New York Times online. You might on a website have the article, you might have links to related content, you might have links to other categories of information, you might have a couple of ads coming by and perhaps a search box as well. In a mobile device, that's just not going to work. Each one would be far too small to be usable. So you really need to understand that if somebody's reading the content, they're just reading the content. And then at the bottom or the top or to the side with a, a swipe, you need to give them access to other possible uh, tools for navigating for those use cases such as related content or search or navigating categories. So the screen size is substantially smaller. Another change that's really important with a mobile device is that you have a fundamentally different interface. So with most desktop applications, you're gonna use a mouse or some, something similar, a trackpad or, or a similar device for navigating your way around. On a mobile device, it's typically about making everything thumbable, right? You've got this device in your hand and typically right or left-handed, you're going to be using a thumb to access different parts of the content, uh, different parts of the screen. And so it's really important to think through from an interface perspective, firstly, are the buttons big enough? Is my thumb gonna actually be able to get this button as opposed to the one next to it? So it's important not to have buttons or links that are too small. It's also important to think about the area. If you think for a moment about my thumb here, I probably don't want to have substantial navigation down here because it's just hard to get to while I'm holding the device unless I start using two hands, which is not always practical. So the kind of sweet spot for most of the navigational capabilities is right there in the middle. So you can just scroll up, scroll down, swipe to the sides, and then access content more or less in the middle of the screen. So it's really important to take the time to think about how would I actually thumb through this? And even when you're just doing early stage paper prototypes, make sure the piece of paper you're sketching on is about the size of your target device, whether it be a, an iPhone or an Android device, they're, they're close enough. And make sure that if you pick it up, put it over a real phone, can you actually really access all of the navigational elements that you're trying to fit into that interface? So we've talked about screen size and interface, but the third distinction that's really important when you work on a mobile app is attention span. One of the things you really notice when you're building mobile applications is that there's a much shorter attention span of your users. Attention spans are typically decreasing on the web in general anyway, as we get used to more immediate gratification, more immediate access to content. Uh, but particularly on a mobile device, it's particularly important to focus on things like simplicity of interface, and download speed so that people can quickly access the information they want. And don't give them too many complex choices. Really focus on the core choices and maybe have an advanced tab or an extra link for more options. So those then are the main differences when you're designing for a mobile audience. What I now want to talk about is a number of ways of thinking about developing for mobile. So there's four areas here that I really want to cover. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about how do you go about building mobile websites? And again, what are some appropriate strategies for doing that? Then I want to look at simple apps if you just need a, a quick application, what's the best way to do it? Then I want to look about this progression. Once you get maybe a little more serious about having an app as opposed to a website, you've tried a simple app, you've thrown something together quickly, maybe you want something with a native look and feel. And there are tools out there for creating cross-platform native solutions. And then finally, there's the idea of actually programming native, which would be, for instance, with an iPhone, 
actually programming in Objective-C, writing code that only works on that type of device, which gives you the absolute best performance, but the trade-off is it's a lot of additional effort to develop, and it's pretty hard to find developers with the necessary skills. So let's go through each of these four ways of approaching mobile development. The first I want to provide an introduction to is building mobile websites. And something I really want to start with here is, is to have a kind of compare and contrast. Let's actually look at a couple of examples. The first example I want to show is a mobile website. And th this is actually, the, excuse me, this is the, the desktop version of the site, but we're seeing it here on a mobile device. So you can see that there's an awful lot of stuff going on here. And I want to compare and contrast this with a website that's been specifically customized for the mobile experience. These are both the, the, the same company. It's, it's a company that sells wines online. And what's really interesting is you can see immediately when you look at the image on the right that it's much, much simpler. There's an awful lot less going on. There are ways to get to most of the content, but there's much less going on at a time. And it's interesting. You can see a lot about the values of the company by the content that they've actually decided to put right there on the home page. This is typically when you have the tough discussions, especially if you're an existing business, when you're sitting down with all of the, the business units or all of the stakeholders and saying, yeah, I know your, your information is important, but is it really that important? Is it really the thing we should be putting right in the middle of that home page? If we can only put one thing on the page, what should it be? So it's really important to take the time when you're developing a mobile website to ask you need to provide a way that people can get to all of the content. Even then, there's broadly two ways of doing that. You can either have a dedicated mobile site, which we'll talk about in a moment, and then a link back to the main site. Or you can create a site, whether it's dedicated or, or whether it's a, a shared site between desktop and website and mobile that is designed to allow you to access all of the content, but that is just gives a, a different navigational interface for mobile devices. And both of them are appropriate, but the one thing you've got to remember is it's not okay anymore to have a website for a mobile device that doesn't somehow allow you access all of the functionality of the desktop. Because, sure, most of the time, if you've got an expense report application or expense report website, <clears throat> most of the time people are just going to want to, on a mobile device, take a photograph of a receipt, enter information about the expense, and add that to their expenses. But once in a while, somebody's going to be just about to go into a meeting and their laptop battery dies. And they've got to give expense reporting information for the entire division uh, to the board of directors. And so it's going to be really important that they have some kind of way that they can get in with their iPhone and run a relatively complex query to say, I want this date range for these groups of people. So even though that's not something that would typically make sense on a mobile device, it's important for you still to support that use case, even if it's as simple as just providing a link back to the full site for people who need it once in a while. And the tricky thing is finding this balance where you provide access to the full version of the site, but you don't overwhelm people by just replicating the full site on the mobile device. 